Here are two stainless steel bowls. Do you know what's holding one to the other? Nothing. It's just that one is so stuck to the other that maybe I could hang from here and they still wouldn't come apart. And that's today's experiment. The void, the vacuum, it pulls things, or is it the air outside that pushes? Look, this question existed back in 1654, and then, a guy named Otto von Goerke, who was a scientist and also the mayor of a city called Magdeburg in Germany, decided to do an experiment to settle this question once and for all. But what he didn't know was that he would end up conducting a historic experiment. What Oton did was make a kind of giant pot in the shape of a sphere, which opened in two, like a big spherical eggshell made of steel. He put those two parts together and removed the air from inside, and to do that, he had to invent a vacuum pump. Regardless of the experiment, this person had already invented the vacuum pump. But the cool thing about this story is that after you remove the air from inside the two halves, you can't open them anymore. Not even if cows tried, not cows. Actually, he used horses, and it wasn't just one horse, he used 30 horses to try to separate those half spheres. 15 on each side, and yes, if you're imagining that it looked like some kind of horse show, trying to pull a steel ball like crazy. That's exactly what he did, he gathered a bunch of people and did it in front of everyone. The thing was such a success that he went all over Germany showing it everywhere putting on a little vacuum show with the horse. And then the experiment went down in history with the name Magdeburg Hemispheres, which is what we're gonna try to do here today. The thing is, I don't have a horse. I don't have a hemisphere. I'm not in Magdeburg, so we're gonna simplify this experiment a bit and maybe you can even try it at home, but with the help of an adult if you're a kid, all right? And if you're an adult, call a kid to supervise because I know adults mess up way more than kids do. Instead of two hemispheres, we got this here, which is a stainless steel bowl. The idea then is to join these two, but stainless steel with stainless steel won't make a good seal. So, we thought about putting a piece of ethylene vinyl acetate foam here to actually serve as a seal, in this case, to keep air from getting back in. Shall we cut this ethylene vinyl acetate foam properly then? To find the center of the circle and make it look nice, I'll use the math book from Manual Du Mundo. There's even a video explaining how to find a circle's center. I need to attach something here to pull it since I can't pull it directly as it's just a big bowl, right? So let's measure the screw and put a steel drill bit here. To keep the air from passing through, I'm going to try using some rubber washers here to act as a seal. I'm not sure this is going to work 100%, but let's try to tighten it as much as possible and crush everything here. Whew. I missed one. Oh, so there was a vacuum pump. I don't have one. How are we going to create a vacuum in this thing here? The concept is to ignite a fire inside, causing the air to heat up significantly and expand. So in the end, we'll have less air mass at the moment when there's fire inside. Then I close the thing. When I close it, then the fire will go out and air won't get in anymore. That will make the air inside become very thin. It's not a perfect vacuum, but it's a pretty good one. I'm holding it here so it doesn't get away. It should catch fire well, right? Let's go. The cool thing is that while it's still hot, the air is still putting pressure inside. As this cools down, that's when things happen. It's dented and bulging here, look. Here it's really bulged. I don't know, you guys don't feel like pouring some cold water here. Shall we go? I think it worked, huh? Yeah. Let me see if it's not making a noise from the air coming in. No. Before we try to really get this thing going, after all, what's going on here? Is it the vacuum that's pulling? No, the vacuum doesn't pull anything. 
You know, there's a lot of air above us, right? There's a huge layer of air, many, many kilometers thick. In this case, the thing imploded. Let's understand the air here first, and then we'll see why it imploded. Just so you have an idea, we consider the border between the atmosphere and space to be an imaginary line that's 100 kilometers high. The air pressure is high down here. And that's why we have something here called atmospheric pressure, which is the air pressing down on us, putting force all around us. Since the air is all around us, this force doesn't just come from top to bottom, it exists in every direction. If we put two hemispheres together here, and they're filled with air inside, the air inside also pushes outward from the inside. So there's no problem at all, if you put one against the other, they won't want to stick together. But if you remove the air from inside, then there will be a pressure imbalance. The atmospheric pressure will squeeze from all sides, trying to crush this sphere. Then you might ask, but this atmospheric pressure isn't that strong. There's no way those 30 horses can't pull it apart. Atmospheric pressure is about 1 kilogram per square centimeter. A square centimeter is about the size of a fingernail. On a printer paper sized area, there's around 600 kilograms of atmospheric pressure acting on it. On Oto's sphere, it was much greater, so just imagine how much atmospheric pressure was acting there. Now, in our case, what I think happened here is that the atmospheric pressure started to push so hard that it dented the stainless steel, and then, once it was dented, the air was able to get in. It literally turned into a hat, man. Let's see if this can be fixed, right? It lost a bit of alignment, this thing. I'm going to try to straighten it without using a hammer or pliers, because a hammer and pliers will mark the stainless steel, and those marks, those little bites, will really let the air in for good. So, I'll try like this, kind of like a little gold hammer here, straighten it without marking the thing. Let's try one more time. I'm trusting this rubber here. I think it ends up filling the space that's a bit misaligned. Maybe we can get the vacuum. I'm pressing it to make contact. Once there's no leak, the vacuum will happen, and it already did. I just can't quite align one thing with the other. You can see that it's not exactly on the same axis here, right? I'll try to put some double-sided tape here so this V a will stick and not keep slipping. Let's see if that makes sense. On this side, it doesn't slip anymore. Should I put double-sided tape on the other side too? Better avoid that, or the annoying guy will claim it's due to the double-sided tape, not the vacuum or atmospheric pressure. And the table turns into a mess. Third vacuum attempt. Oh man, that's why we use safety goggles and gloves. We've got a nice little vacuum here. It's still very hot. When it cools down, this pressure difference increases a lot. I wanted to test this thing right away with some weight here just to show you guys how much it can handle. Look, pulling hard. Look, five kilos of boasa. Go, it won't go, no way. How many kilos do you think it can hold? Let's use that beautiful and complex weighing system we used on the popsicle stick bridge again. Do you think this can hold more than the bridge? Three point four, four point eight, and I forgot to count the weight of the platform, which is five kilos. This is heavy, huh? Twenty point seven kilos, twenty point eight. Wow, that's heavy, huh? Two kilos. I thought this thing was solid, but the iron is hollow. 1.8. 2.2. 
1.8, 5 kilos. Removing 800 from the bucket, it's 2.2. With the 800, it's 1.6, so 1.6. It's written here that there are five kilos, but I don't know where it fits. Actually, things are starting to get messy. This one is eight kilos. I'll put it on this side. Do you have any idea how much iron is down here? This small, flimsy, stainless steel object is holding up, carrying a lot. I forgot about the leftover submarine rope. Does this seem light to you? I'll tell you exactly how much each one weighs, 2,980. I'll round it up to three, okay? You guys will let me round up those 20 grams, right? So put three more there. Three more. I'm afraid it'll fall right on my head. Three more on this side. Three more, three more, three more, three more, three more. Three more, 11 bars. I put another 33 kilos here, just of submarine lead, because we sold the submarine ballast, which was a lot of lead. It's starting to give way. 94 kilos and 400. There's already more than, than, than all of Ibre there. Look, I'm not that fat, you know. Despite its condition, it remains unbroken. The strength of air pressure is impressive, don't you think? I believe that deserves a thumbs up. I'm at a loss for what else to add. I'll have to really think about this. It's my only remaining option. Has it already outlasted the bridge? 98 kilos, 94.4. 94.4, right? 98.4? So, it held up less than the bridge. It has to hold up at least more than the bridge, come on. Put it back. It crumbled faster than the bridge. What a letdown. And the little plate underneath, look, it's intact. I wanna do it again to hang from that thing. It would be cool. Joaquino appears strong here. Now is when the cow twists its tail. This video is full of cows, a vacuum, but it was a horse, right? You have no idea about the jokes that went around while this camera was off. First, what did the cow go to space for? To look for the vacuum. Second, why do cows in Argentina look up? There are oxen in the air. All that's left for me is to take a vacuum fall. Here we go now, huh? If you can handle me, give me a thumbs up. If you can't, at least it'll be worth it for the fall. I'm really scared this will burst on me. Thanks, thumbs up because you held on, huh? Do you think it could pull a car? It's still hot and lacks the ideal vacuum. I bet it's in neutral there, Danny. Yes. Did you pull it? How crazy! Come on, crazy. Flip this thing now, right? We already taught the fisherman by doing it manually. The pickup truck is twice as heavy. Come on, come on, come on. That's it. Can I go? Yeah. Is it pulling? Wow. Wow, let's be honest, nobody expected that. Now let's blow this thing up. I'm gonna ask Daniel to stop the car and I'll pull it. Stop the car, pull the handbrake. Can I, Felipe? Yes. Let's go. The car struggled here, honestly. If this craziness isn't worth a like, I don't know what is. Now you know. If the car gets stuck, just grab two stainless steel bowls, light a fire, stick them together, attach the hook, and pull the cars out. It's all good. 
In another cool video, we stuck two phone books together without glue or a vacuum, then pulled them apart with two cars until they burst. If you like this type of car duel, it's an awesome video.